To get ACLS certified, you'll have to run through Omega Code. And in Omega Code, you're going to see a series of bad rhythms and bad clinical scenarios, one after the other, and you're going to have to figure out how to manage them. Central to that is analyzing rhythms. If you think you can come into an ACLS class and learn your rhythms from scratch, you're sadly mistaken. You want to make sure that you learn your rhythms well ahead of time because that is the crux of the matter. What you do electrically and chemically really matters based on the rhythm. So you want to make sure you know that. So let's just talk a little bit about the heart at first and that will help you understand better what is going on when you have rhythm problems. Okay? Let's go right to the bad one, ventricular fibrillation. In ventricular fibrillation, the heart here represented by the little plastic model. The heart has electricity going in a thousand different directions. A thousand different directions all over it. The heart is contracting, but it's contracting in such an uncoordinated way that no effective pumping can occur. The only treatment, the only effective treatment for this is to shock. That is all there is to it. All the drugs in the world, all the CPR in the world, isn't really going to matter if you don't electrically shock this patient. Now, in a perfect world, for example, in a cardiac case, you put the paddles right on the heart. But we don't have that luxury in most cases. Most of the time, the heart is buried deep within the patient, and we have to put our paddles on on the outside. Okay? You will have to demonstrate that you know how to put the paddles on and shock. The most important thing to remember is wherever you put the paddles, the electricity has to cross the meat of the heart. The electricity has to cross the heart. In a perfect world, that would mean a pad here and a pad way back here, sandwiching the heart. You're not going to really have that luxury in a code, so you're going to have to put the paddles here, and I will demonstrate later. A note about defibrillation. Defibrillation is actually a misnomer. What you do when you shock a heart, and you see this if you ever do a heart case, is you don't really just defibrillate, what you do is you create a systole. If you look at a heart in the heart room, when you can actually look at it and you see it fibrillating, and you see the pads and you shock it, what happens is everything stops. All electrical activity in the heart stops. You stop everything. You stop all the chaos. And for a second, the heart sits there, asystolic, doing nothing. There's no electricity in it at all. Then you hope, you hope against hope, that the heart's native pacemaker will pick up and get the heart beating again. So remember when you're doing defibrillation, what you're doing is you're really doing asystolization. Now no one calls it that, but that's really what happens. That helps you understand something that is frequently a cause of confusion with people. People will say, well, let me see. I shock V-fib, but let me see. Maybe should I shock asystole? Remember, asystole, you don't shock because shocking causes asystole. You could say, in effect, that someone in asystole already has been shocked, since shocking is asystolization. All we're going to focus on now is actually placing the paddles and firing the paddles. We'll show later how we go about setting it. A couple things about pad placement. You can either place sticky pads on or use these pads. You can see that the heart, which is, of course is going to be a little bit deeper, when I shock this, the electricity will be able to go across the meat of the heart. When you shock someone, if you use a biphasic machine, you're going to start at, you're going to, you're going to go right to 200 joules. If you use a monophasic machine, and they're being phased out, <laughs> monophasic phased out, you go right to 360. The idea is we don't work our way up anymore. The idea is you have to shock, and you have to shock right away, right away, and go right to the maximum. When you shock, make sure that you're clear and make sure everybody else is clear. You only have to see someone get zapped once to realize you have to be very, very careful. When you do your ACLS certification, they will have you set the defibrillator at something like two joules or something. The idea being you don't want anybody to get hurt. So when you say clear, press the buttons and shock. What's the difference when you do cardioversion? When you do cardioversion, the paddles when you press down, are going to have to read the EKG for a little bit. So when you do cardioversion, which you're going to do for what? For something like atrial fibrillation or SVT or VTAC that's unstable. When you do cardioversion, remember you have to press the paddles and hold them for a little bit. You have to hold them 
until the pads read what the rhythm is and then fire. So don't make this mistake. Oh, we're cardioverting. Okay. You have to press and hold until they fire. One of the things you'll need to do in ACLS certification is actually turn all the dials and press all the things in the correct order to demonstrate that you know how to actually work a pacemaker. Now, this pacemaker is an interesting one. We use it in our simulation center. It is what we call a perfectly safe defibrillator. Why is that? I took all the wires out of the middle of it, okay? So all we're gonna do is just turn the knobs here and imagine we see the things. I do that because we sometimes have high schoolers come to our simulation center and I don't want any of them getting killed. So when you're going to shock someone, you have to decide a few things. What level are you going to set it at? What kind of machine do you have? Is it monophasic or biphasic? And do you want to have synchronous or not? It's good to actually, I don't want to say play with the machine, but that's the idea. You want to play with the machine and actually turn the different dials and press them in sequence so that when the time comes for your mega code, you can go right through and fire up those paddles and do it the right way. The first thing you do is, number one says energy select, and this is monophasic, so I go right to 360 if we're doing, if we're doing a defibrillation. So you select the energy, you charge it all the way up, and the machine would make a noise and would charge. And then you would press synchronous if you want to do synchronize, but we're defibrillating, so you don't. And then you put on the pa paddles and shock, okay? Don't get faked out by this stuff. Here's pacer output, here's pacer rate. That's only if somebody has, for example, bradycardia and you want to pace them. But remember, these are for pacing, this is for defibrillating.